Russia's Republic of Chechnya has been targeted by drones for the first time since the start of Russia's full-fledged invasion of Ukraine over two years ago. Head of Chechnya Ramzan Kadyrov reported that a drone attack struck the Russian Special Forces University named after Vladimir Putin in the town of Guderms in the Republic at 6.30 in the morning. As a result of an unmanned attack on Tuesday, the roof of an empty building on the territory of the Russian Special Forces University caught fire. Kadyrov said in a post on Telegram channel that after the attack there were no casualties and the fire in the building was extinguished. The Chechen leader noted that investigators have already commenced their work to identify the culprits. The university has not suspended its operations, all services are functioning normally, he added. Earlier, Russia's defense ministry claimed that seven Ukrainian drones were shot down over three of the country's border regions, as well as over the Black Sea. The Russian University of Special Forces named after Vladimir Putin is the first and currently the only private educational institution in the Russian Federation to provide professional training for special units. The university was founded in August 2013 at the proposal of Ramzan Kadyrov. North Korean soldiers are already in Russia and will begin military operations against Ukrainian troops in the coming days. This indicates that the North Korea is fully participating in the war with Ukraine, said the head of the Presidential Office of Ukraine, Andriy Yermak, in an interview with the Italian publication Corriere della Sera. He noted that he could not yet say how many people were involved and whether North Korean units could really change the course of the war. More detailed information was needed. However, according to Yermak, the North Korean military is completely changing the political scenario and meaning of the war caused by Russian aggression. De facto, we can say that North Korea is participating in this conflict. De jour, there was no official declaration of war from Pyongyang, but de facto, they joined the military aggression against our country, a conflict that has been going on for a decade. Yermak noted, he also stressed that it is not enough to simply stop the fighting. It is necessary to prevent further aggression, otherwise the Baltic and Balkan countries will be at risk if Ukraine doesn't stop the invasion. They will be next. Answering a question about the possibility of asking NATO to send troops, Yermak emphasized that the Ukrainians are fighting themselves, of course, with the help of our partners, but on their own, and are doing so quite effectively. At the same time, he noted Ukraine needs a sufficient amount of weapons and financial support because only a strong and militarily secure Ukraine will be ready for serious negotiations with Russia. Thousands of North Korean troops are preparing to back Russian ruler Vladimir Putin in his war against Ukraine. The new soldiers are reportedly from North Korea's Special Operations Forces, the country's most capable military unit, and are likely to be deployed to Russia's Kursk region to try to retake the territory. However, Western analysts can only speculate on how effective these forces are against the backdrop of Ukraine's capable army, writes Phillips Payson O'Brien, professor of strategic studies at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, in an article for The Atlantic. Putin saw an opportunity to strengthen his hand in the war and took it, regardless of the Western backlash. He appears to be betting that the United States will not intervene directly. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin acknowledged that North Korea had joined Russia in the conflict, calling it a very serious problem. Since the start of the full-scale invasion, the United States has been hesitant to provide Ukraine with advanced weapons such as HIMARS, Abrams tanks, ATA CMS missiles, F-16 fighters and JASM long-range missiles. 
While these weapons were eventually provided, it was a waste of time that limited Ukraine's options. Moreover, the United States has never given a clear answer to the question of whether it would allow Western weapons to be used to strike Crimea, the Kirsch Bridge and other Russian targets outside of Ukraine. Russia is hosting North Korean combat troops, believed to number between 1,500 and 12,000, from the Korean People's Army on its territory. The move may appear to deepen Pyongyang's alliance commitment to Moscow, but it carries serious risks for Russia and highlights the challenges Moscow faces in using these troops. Expert Mark Galliotti writes about this for the Sunday Times. Despite the discipline and physical fitness of North Korean soldiers, their actual combat experience is very limited, adding to the difficulty of their potential involvement in combat. Although they are sometimes referred to as special forces, they are simply more specialized than most of the 950,000 regular soldiers in the Korean People's Army and are considered physically fit, disciplined and well-trained. However, they have no real combat experience. Deploying them directly into combat would also be problematic. Most North Koreans do not speak Russian, and the risk of miscommunication and friendly fire would be significant. Pyongyang would also be concerned about the risk of defecting to Ukraine. In any case, the importance of even 12,000 new troops should be put in context. The Russians lose that many people every 10 days of fighting. It will not change the basic arithmetic of the conflict. The expert writes, with its own reserves dwindling, Russia has long cooperated with North Korea to supply ammunition and the military specialists, but much of this equipment has been criticized for its poor quality. Six North Korean technicians were killed in Ukraine, shelling in Donetsk this month, underscoring the risk of significant casualties. Russia also pays for these supplies with food, raw materials and, more importantly, its military technology. Russian analysts fear that Moscow is selling off the family silver to secure a short-term boost at the front. While North Korea may continue to supply ammunition, the technology transfer is a one-time deal. Ukrainian military analyst Vladislav Zelezniov believes Russia is particularly keen on bringing in engineering and technical units from North Korea for combat support. The DPRK's engineering and technical units are among the best globally. North Korea's territory is heavily fortified with defense structures, which means their engineering teams have years of hands-on experience building reliable fortifications. This expertise would be highly useful for the Russians, as they always start constructing new defenses whenever they secure new positions. Zelezniov explained, the expert emphasized that North Korea's military capabilities shouldn't be underestimated. <laughs> 